Do you uh, do you have a go to karaoke song yourself, sir? I've loved Marvel since I was five years old, and secondly. I really care deeply about authentic representation. I am so happy you directed this movie. The movie is amazing. Congrats on it. I loved it, man. Thank you. Thank you, Hector. Appreciate that. So my first question is, what would you say your biggest sources of inspiration were for this movie? I mean, initially, my biggest source of inspiration was my life and working closely with one of our our co-writers, Dave Callahan, who's Chinese American, our creative kickoff was just sharing experiences growing up as Asian Americans. He, he grew up in, in the Bay Area, I grew up in Hawaii, and it was, it was injecting ourselves into the shoes of this character that for us made him come alive and become relatable in a way that was really exciting to us. We were obviously also inspired by the comics and and the, the core the core elements of the comics and the unique family drama that you can see um, at the, the heart of the comics was, was the part that we really gravitated towards and focused on for our movie. There's a scene towards the beginning of the movie around a breakfast table where I was like, you know, my, my parents are from Mexico, I'm Mexican American and I'm seeing this and I'm going, this feels so real to an Asian and Asian American experience, I thought, oh, this is the character, this is so great. I know that you have said you initially weren't interested in making a superhero movie, but you changed your mind with this movie. Was that sort of a, a gradual thing or was there one thing in talking with Marvel Studios where it changed your mind about that? When I initially went in to talk to Jonathan, our producer, uh, about this project, I went in with a lot of ideas and concerns um, about the direction that I I think they probably you know should take and <laughs> also should not take. And yes. In, and what I was pleasantly surprised by was that those concerns were already shared by Marvel and the direction that they wanted to take was one of authenticity and respect and giving the Asian American and global Asian community a hero that they can all embrace and be, be proud of. And equally so, I think creating a, an, an experience that you can relate to regardless of your, your cultural background. Right. I think we all, we all have families, we all have pain and struggle, and we, we're all, I think, in some ways trying to redefine the pain in our lives and turn them into a tool that can actually give us strength. To, to move forward with in power. And uh, that journey is something that, that's really close to me. I am thankful that you included one of my favorite songs ever, Hotel California. Legit, love that song. Um, do, you, do, you, <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have a go-to karaoke song yourself, sir? That is one of my go-to karaoke songs. I, I've like, uh, I've wanted to put that song in a movie for, for a very long time. I don't know. There's something about that song. I just like, I, I can't, it makes me so happy when I hear it. So yeah. it, it kind of started out as a joke in our movie that, that, that turned into a recurring joke. I think we're the first movie to have the right to put Hotel Whoa. California. Don't quote me on that, but if you look it up, I'm pretty, I could not find another movie that has it in, in them. So it's um, amazing. Where, uh, I'm, I'm it, pretty excited about it's that. a song that's better when sung out loud. Like it's <laughs> it's a it's a good song, but it's a better song when it's sung out loud. When did the opportunity to include Abomination and Wong come up in the development of the movie? Was that right there at the beginning, or at some point did that opportunity present itself? And you're like, we, we got to have Wong. We got to have these guys. It was uh, it was a, a, a pretty fun brainstorm when when we landed on this sequence that took place in a, an underground fight international fight club. And we we want we were just brainstorming who's going to be in center ring. That's when everything gets pitched up to to the top to see what makes sense to to Kevin and the other productions. What what would actually make sense to the MCU? I don't entirely know what it is like to direct a movie for Marvel Studios. My question is, are you aware of? Have they told you? Are you a part of the planning of any future plans? for Shang-Chi or the characters in this movie, or is it really just taking it one sort of project at a time? I, you, don't, you don't have to tell me the plans. I just wanted to know if oh, they yeah, exist. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, plans always exist. Uh, there is always yes. a master plan. Yes. Um, I think the genius behind, behind Marvel Studios um, is the flexibility of their plans, is their ability to 
interact with fans in a, a way that is really organic and alive. There is truth to the conversation that is happening between fans and how they react to a movie, the what ifs that are posted online, the dreams that they and hopes and dreams that they they that fans have where, where they hope that a character will go next and what they want to see. There there is a real conversation that's happening with the studio. So even though there is a clear master plan, there it's always a conversation with the filmmakers, what we're reading, what we what we want to do, and everything is what about this? What about this? And any pitch that is a good and exciting pitch will win in the room like it and so that that's the exciting thing about working for that studio destin once again i love this movie from the bottom of my heart i'm so grateful that you guys made it this way and i really really hope that if the opportunity present, presents itself you can come back and direct another movie another project keep shepherding the shang chi story or work on other stuff in marvel thank you again sir thank you for talking to me have a great rest of your day i really appreciate it thank you you too